Pluto is the newest anime on Netflix, and I know that that sentence alone might turn some people off because Netflix anime doesn't have the best reputation, but this is a straight banger front to back, which is mainly because it follows the highly praised source material faithfully. That source material being made by one of the most credible manga authors, having made both Monster and 20th Century Boys. And if you haven't seen or read any of those, hopefully their ratings speak for themselves. Now, what is this anime about, you ask? Well, it's about AI living among humans and... Okay, I get that you might be a bit tired of hearing about AI and robots taking over the future at this point. Honestly, the timing that this show came out is kind of crazy. But you kind of forget that you're watching AI and robots because of how human they all feel. Humans and robots are living together and the robots have been made to be as close as humans as possible. They have feelings just like us and this might be the most apparent with our main character. He's supposed to be this cold and calculated super robot detective but even he has feelings like hatred, and just like a human, he sometimes snaps and loses control, and we get to see him come to terms with that. This makes him a great main character, and I honestly loved following him trying to figure out the case of Pluto. Now, if you've seen Monster, this is actually a pretty similar show, and I don't just say that because there's a guy literally called Dr. Tenma, but particularly in the way that it introduces a ton of new characters and is not afraid to kill them off, or tell standalone stories with characters that don't even have any direct relevance to the plot. The second half of episode one does this very well. And honestly, this half of the episode deserves like a whole video on its own. It's about an old man who composes music on the piano who hates robots and believes that they are not pure. But not just robots, he doesn't like any new tech. For example, all of the instruments he uses need to be real or something that you could find in the 2000s. He probably wouldn't be much of a fan of FL Studio. They made Fruity Loops. It's called Too Easy. It's called you tell the computer what the program. But one day he gets a new butler, and this butler is a robot. The story between these two characters is so beautiful and tragic, it might honestly be my favorite part of the entire show, and it doesn't even even really tie into the main story at all. At least not enough to justify this much time being dedicated to telling it. But I think that's what I really admire about it. The author isn't scared to take risks like this and just does what he wants. New characters are introduced all the time and they all end up playing a way bigger part of the story than you could have ever thought. Now I gotta talk about the production value on this show because it's kind of crazy. The animation is pretty solid. I don't really have too much to say about it. There are some scenes in the first half of episode one that looks absolutely insane but aside from that there isn't really too much mind-blowing stuff although it's still pretty good and most importantly consistent there isn't that much action in this show so there's a bigger emphasis on the art which is the definition of consistent the art always and i mean always looks on point in like every single frame and that's just what you want from a show like this that is very dialogue heavy what i really was impressed by was the soundtrack there's a lot of piano featured in it and maybe i'm biased because i'm a sucker for the piano but I really enjoyed the OST. I don't really know too much about music and the theory behind it, so I'll just say it sounds really good. Now, as much as I thought that this show was kind of a masterpiece and I like talking about the elements that I enjoyed, I also like to critique and criticize the things that I didn't like as much. And there really wasn't too much of that, but there definitely was some. First off, some of the characters I really did not care about, which is fine, but it really felt like this show wanted me to care without giving me much reason for it. The the best examples of this is Brando and Hercules. These two I feel like should have just been the same character because their stories are the exact same. First we have Brando who is super determined to kill Pluto and it's clear that they want me to feel sorry for him because he has a family but that's not enough, bro. Especially when he basically went out of his way to get killed. It kind of reminds me of Mr. Maurer from Monster, who a lot of you probably don't remember even if you've seen the show. But his story was very similar to Brando's, except way better. When we first meet him, he's kind of grumpy, but eventually we get to know why. His wife left him because he was working and smoking too much. Mr. Maurer regrets this and wants his wife back, but is too scared to try, and he doesn't want to stop smoking. Throughout the episode, you learn that he's a character caring and dependable person, and by the end, he's ready to stop smoking to get his wife back. But before he gets a chance, he dies. 
this death really hit me and stuck with me throughout Monsters 72 episodes. When Brando died, I really didn't care. It didn't even accomplish anything for the plot, as he wasn't able to get any information about the enemy. To but our main character and literally everybody else in the entire world is so sad about this. And then we have Hercules' death, which is really strange in comparison, because he dies in basically the exact same way and is equally close to but when he dies nobody cares Geshes doesn't even have a reaction at all this is the scene where he first finds out that hercules has died literally no reaction he doesn't even comment on the fact that his friend died he died just to progress the story and that's just lame like i said i think brando and hercules could have just been the same character i mean if hercules didn't exist and brando just got the information it wouldn't change anything in the story compare these two to the death of north number two his death is way sadder and lastly the story really lacks urgency at times the threat of pluto is obviously a really big one and it's clear that he can just body everyone but he's not very active when it comes to doing so like after the first episode he's never really out hunting for people and this kind of goes back to my previous point with the fact that the robots just get themselves killed pluto doesn't pull up on brando and hercules they both literally go out of their way to seek pluto out and fight him because they for some reason think that they can win there's so much time spent where characters are talking and plot lines are progressing and you just kind of start to forget that the threat of Pluto even exists. These issues I have are not deal breakers though and honestly don't even really matter at all because kind of like Monster, this is a show where you just enjoy the journey and see what happens. So if you need an anime to watch right now, hey, all the episodes are out, go crazy. This show is more relevant than ever right now, not just because of the AI stuff, but more so because of the Palestine-Israel situation happening right now. But if you want to show up with maybe a bit less politics and a bit more action, you have to check out this video right here.